ISIS expanding its brutality and its reach, releasing a horrific video that purportedly shows the beheading of nearly two dozen Egyptian Coptic Christians in Libya. Egypt striking back right away, hitting ISIS targets in Libya in what it calls, quote, retribution for the mass execution. Joining me now, Ryan Morrow, security analyst at the Clarion Project. So the video in and of itself, uh, absolutely horrific. They're going back to their absolutely brutal slayings of not just one, they're just doing more than 20 at a time now. Right, but the bigger message that they're trying to send is that they are fulfilling end times prophecy. And you can see a lot of quotes from officials in media accounts saying, we still don't understand the ideology of this group, and that's because they don't understand the end times prophecies that they're referring to. What do you mean by end times? The end of the world, but the end of the world for Christians or for everyone? For everyone, but it's a good thing in their mind. They believe that the Mahdi, the, this messianic figure in Islam, will appear along with their version of Jesus and will conquer all the enemies of Islam and bring about world peace. And when you watch the video, that's how they justify the beheading of these Egyptian Christians. They say, we are actually setting the stage for the second coming of Christ. This is, we're killing Christians for the sake of Jesus. It's, an, it's a really horrifying and amazing message. Okay, so what else are they saying in this video about the vows to conquer Rome? What does that mean? Right, there's a few different messages there. Uh, first of all, they equate the United States with Rome. When they say that we're at war with Rome, they're saying that war with the United States and also Christianity as a whole, but also more literally means that they want to take over Europe, because especially the parts that were once governed under Sharia. Because according to this ideology, any, ter any territory that was once under Sharia is theirs forever. So this is all defensive in their mind because they are entitled to that land and to take it back. All right. At the same time, there are new details emerging now about efforts to save Kayla Mueller from ISIS. And they're coming from the American woman's Syrian boyfriend, Omar al Khani. So he says that he tried to plead for her life by posing as her husband and that she had told her captors she was married, if she had told her them that, that maybe she would be free. But the guards told Mueller that al Khani would not be harmed if she told the truth. So she was honest. al Khani saying, quote, since she's American, they would not let her go anyway. No sense to stay here, both of us. Maybe she wanted to save me. Maybe she didn't know I came back to save her. What do you make of this, Ryan? I don't think that they would have let her go unless they were convinced that she had converted to Islam and then could have become a walking advertisement. Um, but the boyfriend had a lot of guts doing this. And uh, it's unfortunate that ISIS put her in a situation where she believed that she was being tested, which is what I think anyone in that situation would have thought. And so she felt that if she lied, uh, both of them probably would have been executed. Oh, very interesting and sad at the same time. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you. Time to check in now. Then in Sahih Muslim we are told, a Muslim ruler will die and there will be disagreement concerning succession. And then a man is going to come out of Mecca. His name will be my name and his father's name will be my father's name, said the Prophet ﷺ. He'll have a broad forehead and a large nose. And he'll be known as Al-Mahdi. And he'd hurry from, from Medina to Mecca. As he approaches Mecca, people are going to come out to him, so this has to be a well-known person. Not some obscure non-entity, a well-known person. When the people of Mecca come out to him, they'll force him to accept the bay'ah. The oath of allegiance which legitimizes the leadership of the Amir al-Mu'mini, bay'ah. He will accept the bay'ah at the Kaaba and then proclaim himself to be Al-Mahdi. He proclaims himself to be the Mahdi. There are going to be eclipses of the sun and the moon that month. But there have been eclipses of the sun and the moon in the past. But after he proclaims himself Al-Mahdi, he's going to be attacked from an army, with an army from Sham. That army comes down to the south and armies are under the control of governments. And when that army is between Medina and Mecca going down south, the earth is going to open and swallow that army. 
That is the sign of all signs. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, when the army is swallowed, then the Mahdi is going to be attacked by another army, and this is now an army of the Quraysh, an army of the Kalb. And remember that armies are under the control of governments. The Mahdi will defeat this army, and when an army is defeated, that is the end of Saudi Arabia. Goodbye to bad rubbish.